in the name of the living God, who is Creator, Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> John the Baptist was strange. Strange in our eyes, strange in the eyes of the people who he knew in his culture. He was different. And he's clothed in camel's hair. We're not talking about a camel hair, uh, you know, sports coat. Uh, you know, we're talking about camel's hair. We're talking about animal skin. We're talking about something that's a hair coat, you know, that's uncomfortable. Why would he wear that? He ate locust and honey. I can understand honey. I had honey on my bagel this morning. Locust? Maybe chocolate-covered ants. No, but locust? Locusts, remember, those were the things that were a plague on the people of Egypt when they held the Israelites in captivity. Strange. And he lived in the wilderness. The wilderness is actually any place which is not the structure of civilization. In the wilderness, uh, you're not with your friends and family, usually. You're not with doing the usual things. It's a different rhythm. It's a different environment. It's a place where maybe surprises come. You might know, not know how to survive. You have to be creative. It's a challenge to live in the wilderness. Not everybody does it. It's strange. I guess you could say that John the Baptist was countercultural because all of these things really weren't a part of his life or the normal life of someone who lived in Jerusalem. Maybe even, even antisocial. Why did he go out there? He was strange, but he didn't start out strange. In fact, he, had, um, he was born into privilege, really. His father, Zechariah, was a priest in the temple of Jerusalem. Um, his mother, Elizabeth, was um, a, descendant, uh, a descendant of Aaron, who was the brother of Moses. Um, they were very old when John was born. It was a miracle that he was born. It was an answer to their prayer and God's action that he was born. That was a little uncommon, but it was, it was a good life. He was really born into a degree of privilege uh, to be the priest in the Jerusalem temple, in the temple, and to have good lineage. That, that was a good deal in Jerusalem. So what happened? Why did he leave? Well, I guess that life was not feeding him. I guess that life he came to discover was really not what he wanted to do, that it didn't bring him peace and joy. It's not that he was against it, probably. I'm sure he was grateful for all that he had been given, even life itself. But somehow it wasn't working for him. And so he left. How did he get to the wilderness? Maybe he was lost. A lot of people end up in the wilderness because they don't know where they're going. Maybe he literally got lost, and there he was, found himself lost in the wilderness of the desert. <clears throat> or maybe he was searching for something, and he just couldn't find it in Jerusalem. He couldn't find it among the people that he already knew. He was searching for something, and maybe he thought, out there, out there where there are not that many people, out there where it's silent, maybe... Maybe it's a place where I can discover who I really am or what I'm meant to do. Or maybe, like Jesus later on, maybe God led him into the wilderness. Maybe the Holy Spirit nudged him to move out there in a different place, a different setting, and listen. So he went... And then he appeared in the wilderness to the people from the Judean countryside, from, it says, all the people of Jerusalem. I think that's probably a little hyperbolic. But anyway, lots of people from the city, from the towns, from the country, came to be baptized by him. During that time in Judaism, there was a lot of upheaval. People were sort of looking, they were looking for the new Messiah, you know. They were looking for an answer to a way to get out of their Roman oppression. They were looking for a new way. And so probably some of them thought, maybe this is it. 
but he, people were drawn to John the Baptist and to the Jordan River and were baptized there. He appeared to those people in the wilderness as a prophet because that's what God did with him in the wilderness. God shaped him and formed him and transformed him into a prophet. And if you remember the Old Testament prophets, they are people who stood up, who said things strongly, sometimes scaring people, sometimes maddening people, sometimes really causing conflict, but they spoke the truth of God to people for the sake of their faithfulness. And so that's what he did with these people who came to hear him. He spoke the truth to him, to them. And he said, um, you need to evaluate where you are in your life. You need to take a, look at, a hard look at the direction of your life, the path of your life's journey. You need to decide if this is really what you want to do. You need to ask God for forgiveness and guidance. In other words, he really put some hard words out there making them think about their lives and what they were doing with it and where they were in their faith journeys. And then he baptized them with water. It was a baptism of forgiveness, a baptism of repentance. He baptized them in the River Jordan. But after that, after that, he said, listen, I'm not the one you're looking for. I'm happy to challenge you in your journey. I'm happy to baptize you, but I am not the one you're looking for. The one you're looking for is Jesus, the Son of God, the Messiah, the Christ. So keep your eyes wide open and continue your journey in faith. And when you see Jesus, let him baptize you in the Holy Spirit. A whole nother step in their faith journey. During this season of Advent, the church encourages us to slow down, to be still, and to listen. So how's that going for you? <laughs> not well, I know. I'm, if you aren't, yeah, just see, I'm, I'm pretend I'm a prophet here. It's not going well for you. You need to change your ways. It's hard during this time for us to slow down. It is. There's so many opportunities, there's things we want to do. So many things people want us to, other people want us to do. But but it's important for you to remember that the church wants us to slow down and to listen. The church wants us to really be prepared when the time comes to celebrate the first coming of Jesus Christ in this world as a little baby. And as you heard last Sunday, the church during the season of Advent it's a time for us to remember and prepare for the second coming, whenever that's going to be, second coming of Christ, which will bring with it a degree of completion or fulfillment or judgment. Anyway, it's going to be something different than what's going on right now. This is a time to prepare and look to, towards that event sometime out there in the future. But really the focus of this Sunday and this part of Advent being focused on John the Baptist is that other coming or advent of Jesus Christ, which is when Jesus Christ comes into our hearts. And you know what? That didn't happen 2,000 years ago, and it didn't, it's not going to happen. It's not the focus of wherever out in the future Christ will come again. It really can happen every day of our lives, and, and, and that's our prayer that every day of our lives in some way, Christ, we can be in a place so that Christ can come into our hearts again and again, deeper and deeper. And that is the message of this day. John the Baptist <clears throat> was countercultural because he stood outside of the structure of society not necessarily with John the Baptist to stand against what was going on in the culture, 
but just so that he could be more faithful to his journey of faith and his faith in God. And you know, we can do that too. We could choose to do that too. We could be active in our culture, active in our society, active in civic life. We could also say, wait a minute, this, this is the journey of my faith. These are the principles of my faith. And John the Baptist is reminding me to be true to those. True to those in a way which moves me deeper and deeper into my faith in Jesus Christ. We can do exactly what John the Baptist did and what he, what he encouraged those people who came to listen to him do. John the Baptist spends time in the wilderness. And again, the wilderness is a place we can go. We actually, we actually could go to the wilderness sitting in the pews of this church. And the wilderness, as I said, is a place where, where we're sort of not controlled by the rhythms of all that surrounds us. But it's a place where it, it's silent. It may be dark. It may be bright. But it's a place where we feel an especial closeness to God and have an opportunity to see things in a new light. It's a place where we're called by God to go and to move on out of it and to live our lives. John the Baptist believed in Jesus Christ, and we can too. I know we believe in Jesus Christ, but we can choose also to go deeper and deeper in that faith, just as John the Baptist did. He reminds us of that today. And John the Baptist, most importantly, I think, pointed people to Jesus. As I said, when those people from the countryside and from the town and from Jerusalem came to him, he said, don't look at me, move through me to, to Jesus. To Jesus. He always pointed people to Jesus. And you know what? We could choose to do that same thing. Through the way that we live our lives, being faithful to Jesus, we could also point the way to Jesus to others who might be looking to us. And as we look to others to help us move towards Jesus, they might be pointing the way to Jesus to us. This is a rich time, the season of Advent, and many opportunities are placed before us. But may we remember that message of today. Some way, at some time during every day, go to that quiet place. Just calm down. That pri pri private place, which may be sort of a wilderness for you, in that it could be a place where more, more truths of God will be revealed to you. And you will have the space and the time to let it sink in. Especially before we come forward in joy to celebrate the birth of Jesus at Christmas. Amen.